Hi guys, welcome uh, uh, to the second part of the uh, topic on the structure and function of synapses. So in this video we will be looking at the transmission across a holinergic synapse, so the one that contains the acetylcholine neurotransmitter. So uh, this is the example of the excretory synapse. So we did say there are two of the synapses. If the um, neurotransmitters released will bind to the uh, sodium ion channels and allow the uh, income of those sodium uh, ions we will then lead uh, with the deep uh, that will then lead to the depolarization on the postsynaptic neuron membrane so we will have a look how this process works and how is it possible to achieve the action potential from the presynaptic neuron to the postsynaptic neuron membrane so we're starting with the action potential, which uh, which is uh, seen at the end of the presynaptic neuron membrane. Make sure you use the word membrane, which causes the calcium ion protein channels to open. Once they are open, the influx of calcium ions uh, will take place by facilitated diffusion. So. Once this is done, okay, the influx of calcium ions into the presynaptic uh, neuron membrane took place, and this now causes the vesicles that contain the neurotransmitters to fuse with the presynaptic membrane, releasing the acetylcholine, which diffuses across the narrow synaptic cleft. So then it will bind to the receptor sites on the sodium pro uh, protein channels, sodium ion protein channels, and this will cause the sodium ion protein channels to open. So the sodium ions then diffuse along the concentration gradient to the postsynaptic neuron membrane. So that will then lead to the depolarization to be, to be achieved on the postsynaptic neuron membrane. And if the threshold action is uh, produced, then obviously the postsynaptic neuron membrane will be now depolarized. So at the end, okay, obviously our neurotransmitters now has to be hydrolyzed. So the acetylcholine esterase enzyme will hydrolyze acetylcholine neurotransmitter into acetyl and choline. So what do we want to achieve here? We want to, this neurotransmitters hydrolyzed to acetyl and choline to come back to the presynaptic neuron membrane. So both of those will then diffuse back across the synaptic cleft into the presynaptic neuron membrane. And this is really important because it prevents from the uh, ongoing generation of the action potential in the postsynaptic neuron membrane. Okay, so this also allows the one, uh, one direction, one flow of the uh, action potential to be achieved in one direction. So uh, at the end, okay, we were talking about mitochondria and ATP before in our first video, and this is where we need them. So ATP is released by mitochondria to, uh, and it's used to recombine this choline and ethanolic acid into acetylcholine. So the acetylcholine is stored in the synaptic vesicles as it was before, and the sodium ion protein channels now will close. Okay, because there is no acetylcholine uh, around the uh, binding sites on that receptor site. Right, so here, past paper question to check if you can select keywords. So describe the sequence of events which allows information to pass from one neuron to the next using cholinergic synapse. So the synapse with the acetylcholine neurotransmitter. So. Starting with the action potential at the end of the presynaptic neuron membrane causes calcium ion protein channels to open and calcium ions enter the uh, presynaptic uh, membrane by facilitated diffusion. So uh, this causes synaptic vesicles move and fuse with the presynaptic membrane releasing acetylcholine which diffuses across the narrow synaptic cleft 
then it binds with the receptor sites on sodium protein chan sodium ion protein channels on postsynaptic membrane this causes sodium ion uh, protein channels to open sodium ions then diffuse a long concentration gradient to postsynaptic neuron leading to the polarization depolarization of postsynaptic neuron membrane okay so that's your uh, model answer and let's have a look now at the inhibition uh, inhibition so this type of the synapse it will not lead to any new action potential uh, creation on the postsynaptic neuron membrane so this is not taking place and why this is the case because we will have to deal now with the chloride ion channels instead of the sodium ion channels so what happens the presynaptic neuron membrane releases neurotransmitters that instead bind to chloride ion channels on the postsynaptic neuron membrane so chloride ions protein channels will open now and they, they will move to the postsynaptic neuron membrane by facilitated diffusion bind uh, to the, uh, a binding of those neurotransmitters will now cause nearby potassium uh, protein channels to open so the ions will move out of the postsynaptic neuron membrane into synapse and then we will achieve outside of the synapse membrane uh, and outside of the synapse sorry more positive charge and inside more negative because of those ions so this we will call hyperpolarization and you, <clears throat> the only one way to overcome the hyperpolarization is the further addition further influx of the sodium ion channels so uh, to recap okay one more time we had two types of the synapses uh, the one that leads to the depolarization due to sodium ion channels and the other one hyperpolarization due to chloride so, uh, chloride ion channels so just the features of the synapses unidirectionality so the uh, uh, action potential will be sent only in one direction from presynaptic neuron membrane to the postsynaptic neuron membrane okay and uh, summation so the summation is the process whether we will find out if the action potential will be triggered or not and we've got two types of the summation spatial and temporal so the spatial summation it's the sum of the um, uh, action potentials and then the temporal uh, it's just from between one neuron membrane to another neuron membrane so the main differences between them the spatial summation trigger a new action potential of the number of different presynaptic neuron membranes by but the temporal summation will trigger a new action potential by a single presynaptic neuron so the neurotransmitters will release many times uh, will be released many Many times over a short period of time and the total uh, concentration of them it's enough to meet the threshold value to then pass the action potential on the postsynaptic neuron membrane right so that's everything uh, on a synapses and the transmission see you later